Good morning. Thanks for joining us. This week's devotions are from John 4, 27 to 42, the conclusion of the true story of the woman at the well. To review, Jesus chooses to lead his disciples through Samaria, the land of their enemies that they hated. It wasn't to save two days of walking around the area, it was to teach them many things, things that we also are learning as we study this incident. Jesus' disciples go into town to get food while he remains behind at the well. He's weary from the journey and is sitting there when a woman arrives. Jesus has nothing to retrieve water from the deep well. Uh, it's likely one or more of the disciples that had the water jar or animal skin and rope. So seeing the woman draw water, Jesus asks her for a drink. She's surprised that he would speak to her considering the hatred that existed between Jews and Samaritans. But Jesus doesn't hate her. He loves her and intends to save her. The request for water turns into a spiritual conversation about living water, worship, and the coming Messiah. Jesus speaks with her about her sin. She learns that he already knows about her past. But before shame and despair can continue their devastating work in her soul, Jesus reveals his identity as the promised Messiah. It's all grace. She did nothing to deserve it. In fact, she didn't even ask for it. But there it was, there he was before her, seeing her as she was and speaking kindly with her. Well, his disciples return with food from town, and like yesterday's teaching, that's where we'll pick up the story. This morning, I'm gonna read this final section of the larger 42 verse story. Then each day this week, we'll re-examine a portion of it to glean some ministry insights. They will serve to equip each of us to become more effective in ministering to others. John 4, 27. Just then, his disciples came back from town. They marveled that he was talking with a woman, but no one said to the woman, what do you seek? Or to Jesus, why are you talking with her? That would have been inappropriate. They needed to trust Jesus, that he knew what he was doing, and he did. He always does. So the woman left her heavy water jar and rushed away into town. Why? to share with the people what had been revealed to her. Come, see a man who told me all that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Notice she has no fear, but rather courage. She no longer cares what they think about her. Imagine living in such a way that you no longer are consumed with what other people think of you. Your primary concern is what they think of the Messiah and that they meet him. God did that work of grace in her, he can also do it in us. Her testimony is so compelling because the Spirit of God is anointing it that they left what they were doing in the middle of the day, went out of the town, and were coming to Jesus. Uh, verse 31, uh, meanwhile, the disciples were urging him saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him something to eat? And Jesus taught them, my food, that which nourishes me, is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. That's why I came from heaven. I have a mission and you are seeing it fulfilled. I've come to save souls like this Samaritan woman like you. Verse 35, do you not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Well, that is the way it worked. Plant the seeds and expect a harvest in four months. Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Jesus didn't mean the whitening wheat fields around them. He meant the people from the town who were approaching them. He continues, 
Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. Ministry is a joint effort of every member of God's family. We all participate in the joys and challenges of ministry. He continues, For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. We'll talk about that next week. Uh, verse 39, uh, Many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. So Jesus knew of her sin and yet he did not despise or reject her like the townspeople had. No shame, rather mercy. Isn't that what we all want and need? Isn't that what we are called to convey to others? Verse 40, so when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them and he stayed there two days. He's breaking down the hatred barrier in their hearts. He always does. No hatred, rather love. Verse 41, And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. She shares her testimony, and in that, the Spirit reveals to them that Jesus is the Savior of the world, indeed. For this morning, consider three takeaways. No fear, rather courage, to speak up and witness, even to enemies. No shame, rather mercy. No hatred, rather love. Good lessons. Let's pray. Lord, this morning, fill us with your Holy Spirit and the fruit of love to replace any hatred in our thoughts or hearts. Thank you for your mercy, for freeing us from the shame of our past. May we express mercy as we have been shown mercy. Today, give us courage to speak up and share our witness of you, Lord. And now, offer your prayers.